Are you ready? Yes, I am. It will. The Zonde Spear. Ooh, boy. One of the deadliest weapons used by the Zonde tribes of Central Africa, the Zonde Spear was used for fighting as well as for hunting. Known throughout history as conquering warriors, the Zonde exhibited unmatched skills on the battlefield. Affixed to a wooden shaft, the spear was suitable for throwing and attacking from long distances, but its thrusting ability made it just as effective as a close combat weapon. The sharp upper and lower tines and multiple spikes inflicted deadly wounds both upon entry and exit from the victim's body. The Zonde's lethal use of the spear can be seen highlighted in the game Deadliest Warrior. Bladesmiths, I will take your Zonde spear and deliver killing blows on this ballistic stomach. Drew, you're up first. You ready? Let's make those intestines out intestines. <laughs> All right, let's do that. I like that. Right now, I'm about to hear Doug say it would kill. And that's the only thing I'm here for. To help me out today, please welcome back RJ Markaida. He will have the pleasure of wielding your zombie spear. Right, Drew, it feels very good in the hand. It lacerates deep when we thrust this into the chest cavity, into the heart, on its way out. Not only does it take some skin with it, but it also took out some ribs. Your tines right here from the side entry, the spear went all the way through and on its way out, it took everything that was in its path. But there is one issue. As you can see, your tip right here broke off. But other than that, this is a weapon that is deadly and it will kill. Thank you. All right, Jason, your turn. You ready? I know it will <laughs> cut. <laughs> All right, Jason. The balance of your weapon feels good. When it penetrated into the chest cavity, it hit a rib and broke it in half, got into the heart, and there was no edge damage on your tip. All these hooks right here did what it's supposed to do. Into the abdomen, ripped everything out, even the barb. And the beautiful thing about this is it will kill. That's what I wanted to hear. Say hello to my little friend here. Today, we're gonna to test the overall strength and construction of your Zonde spears by, well, we're gonna fire them out of this cannon into this wood block wall. Now, I'm not concerned about what your spears do to the wall. I wanna see how well your spears survive the wall. Drew, you're up first, are you ready? No. <laughs> well, we're gonna do it anyway. Let's do it. That worked really well, Drew. Despite the fact that you did lose a little bit of your tip in the kill test, didn't have any effect going into that block wall. Matter of fact, you sunk all the way down here. Very impressive. Your shaft is fine, nothing loosened up, nothing cracked. Your spear head is still solid. Overall, survived. Very good. Thank you. So Jason, what are you thinking? Thinking, let's make splinters. That's a problem. Oh, God, no. I'm seeing it hang up a bit on the barrel, and my heart just absolutely sinks. Jason, we've got a big problem here. The parameters that we set for these weapons are for testing purposes. Because your blade didn't meet the inch and a half parameter with a circular cross section, we cannot fit the shaft of your weapon down the barrel of our testing apparatus here. And because we can't test it evenly and fairly with Drew's blade, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. This was absolutely 
Worst case scenario. I'm proud that I got this far, but I'm incredibly disappointed. Well, Drew, in a competition where attention to detail is just as critical as craftsmanship, you are the Forge and Fire champion and will be collecting a check for $10,000. Good job. Oh, my god. Oh. How do you feel right now? I'm 18-year-old, and I'm the Forged and Fire champion. What, what just happened? Well, I think the best blade just won, my friend. Come over here and shake our hands. Oh, god. Didn't want to win this way, but I won. And that's kind of all that matters. I started bladesmithing seriously because of this show. I learned all that I had to learn to make it here. And I just won. This, this is the dream. Oh my god, man. <laughs> Blackbeard's infamous cutlass. Among the most notorious pirates of the 18th century, Blackbeard terrorized Caribbean and Atlantic merchant shipping with his trademark cutlass in hand. Its short but thick curved blade featured a razor sharp edge that was ideal for hacking and slashing during close quarters combat while seizing small vessels. In his legendary battle with Captain Robert Maynard in 1718, Blackbeard's cutlass broke Maynard's sword in half with a single blow. Today, Blackbeard's menacing presence and expert swordsmanship can still be seen in the video game, Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag. Bladesmiths, to test the lethality of your cutlass, I'm going to inflict lethal wounds on these ballistic dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? I sure hope so, Doug. Let's do this. All right, Jason, you got a very big handle here. But at least it's got the swells, it's got an indexing to where I hold on to it, I can tell where the edge is. The weight that you have in this weapon is so light in sense that I can wield it even around here. You've got the clavicle into the ribs, all the way through the lungs, and definitely it will kill. All I ever wanted to hear, made my day. Seth, you're up next, you ready? Get some. Seth, your sword is forward heavy without a balance coming back. I don't know whose shoulder's gonna hurt more. The dummies are mine, but your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. To test the strength and durability of your swords, I'll be chopping through these bones and then attacking that peg leg. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your blades. Jason, you're up. Are you ready? The balance of your weapon is really nice, which is surprising because you've made a two-handed cutlass. Your blade held up very well, except for the one little chip. And it's not even a chip, it's a roll. So it didn't blow out. It's a good job. Thank you, Dave. All right, Seth, are you ready? Yes, sir. Seth, 
First up, this thing's a beast. It is probably a pound heavier than your competitor's sword. Your blade, I mean, I can run my finger to nail down this. I can see a couple of glinting spots, but it really didn't take any damage. All right, bladesmiths, let's find out if there's any edge left. This is the rope cut and pirate sail slash. To test the edge of your cutlass, I will cut this rope, which will raise the sail, and then I will slash the sail. This is all about what your sword will do to the sail and rope. Jason, you up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Jason, your edge cut through the rope easily and cuts with every part that the edge met on this pirate sail. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Awesome. Seth, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Let's go. Let's do this. All right, Seth, what are the chances you find a very dull spot on the first cut on the rope? But on the second cut, it found another spot that was sharp. But on the sail, working a heavy sword like this affects my cuts. Jason, Seth, the judges have tested your weapons and they've made a final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Jason. Congratulations, you're the new Forge and Fire champion. Seth, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your blade. Jason, congratulations, you are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a bundle of bullion that's worth 10 grand. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Come on, that's incredible. Forge and Fire champion! The Spike Shield. Oh, <laughs> Dating back to prehistoric times, the shield is the oldest form of protection, designed to block attacks from weapons like spears, swords, axes, or arrows. Over time, they have varied greatly in size and construction, using materials such as steel, wood, animal hide, and even turtle shells. Used primarily as a defense weapon, the shield can also be used to attack by punching an opponent with either its face or rim. Sometime around the Middle Ages, spikes were incorporated, adding an extra level of brutality to its design. The long steel spike could deliver deadly blows, oftentimes immediately disemboweling the attacker. The most notable spiked shields today can be seen in the popular video game series, Skyrim. Gentlemen, between the 13th and the 16th century, spiked shields were commonly used by infantry to protect from swords, spears, and arrows. I'm gonna fire three bolts from a crossbow to test each of your shields. If your shield is strong, it should deflect the arrow. Ilya, you're up. You ready? Yes, I am. I can see where the bolts hit, Ilya. Small impact there, here, and right there. Nothing that would have been threatened the, the man behind this shield. So that's very well done. Michael, you're up. You ready? I think so. Let's do this. All right. Michael, I can see where one hit. Give a bit of a dimple. One impact, but somewhere on the center, boss, you could actually hear it. And though there are some cosmetic issues with your shield, it certainly held up to the strength test. 
So well done. Thank you. Doug? Blade Spitz, this is the kill test. With your shield, I will take four hits on this ballistics dummy that's wearing chainmail. Ilya, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, I am. The shield feels good in the hand. I can maneuver in different ways, not only to protect, but also to attack. Now let's see how much damage it did. The killing blows were right here, where it penetrated all the way. That's to the sternum and into the lung. In, that is in the belly. That goes all the way into this ballistic dummy. Your shield and the spike will kill. Mike, it's your turn. You ready? All right. Uh, Mike, your spike's a little bit loose. Let's see how it goes in the test. We'll see. Mike, it feels good in the hand. You can strike with the edges. You can accompany it with the other hand. It moves well. The spike did hold up. Now let's see how much damage we did. All right. God. Your spike definitely penetrated on both punctures. Right here, probably where the diaphragm is, and in the abdomen right here, all the way through. Your shield will kill. Thank you. Blade Spitz, this is a sharpness test. I will attach your shield to this mechanical device. I will then release your shield to see if it'll puncture the steel drum. If your spike is sharp, it should go in easily. If not, well, it may just dent the drum. Eli, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Three, two, one, engaging. Well, Ilya, your spike went cleanly through the drum and all the way out. I don't see any problems or any deformations on your spike. So it held up very well. Good job. Thank you. Mike, you're up. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. And in three, two, one, engaging. Well, Mike, your spike went all the way through, got stuck a little bit came out cleanly, but I do not see any damage to your spike. Good job, sir. Thank you. The judges have scrutinized your work, and they've made a final decision about which of you is the Forged and Fire champion who will receive a check for $10,000. Ilya, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. Thank you. Mike, your shield did not make the cut. Please surrender your shield. John, this is a fantastic experience. I think I performed very well. So as much as I would have liked a win, this still feels like a victory. Ilya, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Thank you. The way that all works together, I mean, just fantastic piece, I think. I'm fairly satisfied with the end result. I might not often show it, but trust me, I am proud. The prize money is already pretty much spent on student loans and my girlfriend's education in astrophysics. I'm the Forge and Fire champion, and it feels pretty good. The Lynch next sword. Created by Emperor Maximilian I in the 15th century, the Lance Connects were a deadly mercenary force armed with pikes, swords, and crossbows. The most battle-proven Lance Connect mercenaries were armed with massive two-handed swords. These imposing blades featured parrying lugs above the guard to deflect enemy attacks. Earning double the pay of their peers, these garishly dressed swordsmen of fortune would rush headlong into enemy pikes in an effort to disrupt their opponent's formations. Today, you can see the Lanschneck Sword in the hit mobile strategy game, Dominations. Bladesmiths, the two-handed German Lanschneck Swords, a big sword. So we're expecting big damage. I will take your sword and deliver slashes, thrust, and chops on this wild boar carcass. Todd, you're up first. You ready? Yes, I am. Let's do this.
I touch. First up, your handle construction. It's comfortable to hold on to. You have a very thick and wide and stout edge, so it's a chopper, not a slicer. The big issue I have with this is that it's a heavy sword, but despite its weight, it will kill. All right, DJ, it's your turn. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> DJ, let's talk about your sword here. It's even heavier than the other sword. The tip you have over here is wide. The first thrust went in, the second one couldn't, and I tried. The one thing it did was break its back. A thrust like that, and a broken back like that, will kill. All right. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. I'm going to test the overall construction of your blade. I'll be both stabbing and chopping into the steel plate. All right, Todd, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes. All right, Todd, you took some pretty good rolls. These rolls are fairly deep, but uh, it held up. Nice and done. All right, DJ, you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, DJ, and this weapon is heavy. Look at that balance point, so far forward. Keeping that tip up is brutal. You've got a really, really super stout edge, and honestly, it held up quite well. There's some rolls here where it connected, but uh, the weapon's still solid. It's a strong blade. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, your blades are still in one piece. Now let's see if they still have an edge. To test that edge, I'll be cutting through this cane. Todd, you're up. You ready? Yes. OK. Hear that? It sings. It's like a tuning fork. All right, Todd, so let's talk about your uh, singing sword here. <laughs> you definitely have a sharp edge here. Sharp sword, made good cuts. Hold on. Thank you, thank you. All right, DJ, you ready? Are you ready? That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I can run my finger along that edge. On the first cut, as soon as I hit the dull part, it just starts pushing stuff over. Did a good job putting it together, but uh, it's just not sharp enough to cut. Todd, DJ, you've both done an incredible amount of work to bring these massive swords back for our final round of competition. But there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is Todd, congratulations. You are the new Forest and Fire champion. DJ, unfortunately, 
Your sword didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. My biggest regret is I should have spent more time on the edge. I did my best. And uh, I didn't want to build something that was going to snap. And I definitely did that. Todd, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. And that is a title that comes with a check $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, John. Please present your blade to the judges. I'm a little surprised. You know, it's still like a surreal kind of thing. I've proven what I've come to prove, that I'm capable, that I'm still skilled, and I'm thrilled that I was up to the challenge. I feel so good, I don't know how to feel. Bardish. Sweet. Vicious and menacing, the Bardish was a favorite of Eastern European infantry soldiers during the 16th and 17th centuries. Its large crescent-shaped axe head measured nearly two feet at the edge and could cleave through flesh and bone. Specialized soldiers called streltsy would use the Bardish's pole to balance their muskets for firing from a distance, then switch to their axe during melee combat. Though rare in American pop culture, can experience the Bardisha's savagery on the virtual battlefield of the game, Chivalry Medieval Warfare. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. We'll find out how lethal your weapon is. I will take your Bardisha and deliver lethal chops on this big carcass. John, you're on first. You ready? Let's do it. Do this. Head on, brother. All right, John, let's talk about your Bardish here. I love the swells. By putting these welds right there, it allows me to adjust my hand and get a good grip every time I move it around. Your blade right here is razor sharp. Cuts through spine, bones, and thick flesh. Overall, sir, your Bardish will kill. I got something to show you. Oh, sure. Kill tests. Oh, it will kill. <laughs> good it. job. I'm glad I was hoping to kill because I had to do that. I did that. And, uh, well, good job. All right, Michael, your turn. You got anything to show me? Nope. All right. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Michael, this is at least around 11 pounds, all forward weight. I waste so much energy in recoiling that could be used in attack. But overall, sir, your badish will kill. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, the stump thump and steer smash. To test the strength and durability of your bardishes, as well as their overall construction, I'll be chopping mercilessly into these logs and cleaving that steer skull in half. Remember, this is all about what happens to your bardish and not what happens to the wooden bone. John, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Awesome. Well, John, Woo. your uh, bardiche, it's got a nice weight to it. I'm not a huge fan of these undulations in the handle because I want to be able to move my hands around. I'm looking at the edge. It held up beautifully. Everything's still straight and tight. Good job. Thank you. Michael, you're up next. Oh, you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hope you ate your Wheaties. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. 
Well, Michael, first things first. This thing is heavy. It's a beast. But uh, everything is still tight. There's no motion in it, even after all of that chopping and, and smashing of skulls. The edge held up really well, so well done. That's awesome. Yeah. Up next is the sharpness test, and for that, I give you the date. All right, gentlemen. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what your blades do to the target. So take one shot right down the middle, trying to split those watermelon. Put half in one bucket, half in the other. All right, Johnny, you ready? Let's do it. OK. Nice. <laughs> All right, John. It feels good. It's got a good balance to it. The shape of this is really nice. The cutting edge, curved like that, cut through the watermelon beautifully. Sharp weapon. It's nice Thank and you. done. Thanks. All right, Michael, you're up. Are you ready? Bring out the beast. OK. <laughs> Well, right off, it's definitely sharp, but it weighs a ton. I like the design of this, but build strong doesn't necessarily mean build heavy. John, Mike, you bladesmiths have engaged in one of our most difficult competitions. However, only one of you can be the Forge Fire champion, and that champion is... John, congratulations. Thank You're our you. new Forged and Fire champion. Mike, unfortunately, your weapon didn't make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. My experience here was definitely a challenge. It pushed me to my limits. I learned a lot. I might not be the Forged and Fire champion, but I still feel like I'm walking away a winner. John, congratulations. You're the new Forged and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for how much? And Graham. Please present your Bardiche to the judges. This is the most mentally, physically, emotionally stressful time, but also the best time of my life. Woo! Fortune Fire Champion. I'm super excited to get home and tell my wife about the great news. And now, next thing coming up, I'm going to be having a baby boy. So, uh, I mean, this is a wonderful year, thank God. 